and welcome to Los Eco's thorough newspaper analysis for the 30th of May 2023. We have one editorial article for today, which is titled From Master of the Roster to the Master of All Judges. For the second and the third segment of the day, we will have the news update and the legal news. So in today's article, From Master of Roster to the Master of All Judges, it talks about the particular decision or the particular interim order that has been given uh, given by the Chief Justice of India upon the recall petition that had been moved by the central government. Now, the recall petition had stated that there were certain difficulties that were being faced due to the, Ritu, due to the implementation of the Ritu Chabaria versus Union of India and that the investigation officers or the investigating agencies required more time to file the charge sheet. And hence, the CJI said that until the matter was discussed and until a verdict had been reached upon the same, the application of Ritu Chabaria versus the Union of, of versus the Union of India would be put on hold. So before that, let's get into what the Ritu Chabaria judgment is. Now, recently, a division bench of the Supreme Court, uh, in the case of Ritu Chabaria versus the Union of India, affirmed an under trial strike to be released on default bail in the event of investigation remaining incomplete and proceeding beyond the statutory time limit. So the statutory time limit to file a charge sheet by the investigating agency after the completion of the investigation is around 60 to 90 days. So what generally happens is that often these investigation officers or the investigating agencies, they come forward or they do not file charge sheets within the stipulated time. Or even if they do, they state that the investigation is incomplete and, you know, like releasing the accused would hamper the investigate, like the carrying out of the investigation process. So the court held that this was not sufficient to keep the accused or uh, to deny the accused of their bail and default bail would be granted if the investigating agency could not complete their investigation within the stipulated time. It concluded that an accused's right to seek default bail would be terminated only upon the completion of the investigation within the statutory time. So now we come to why is this an extraordinary decision? So and by this, we are not talking of the Ritu Chabaria judgment. We're talking of the interim order that has been passed by the, uh, the, by the Chief Justice of India. So the, G the CJI or the Chief Justice of India has entertained a recall petition moved by the Union of India against this judgment. It then passed an interim order directing courts to decide bail applications on their merits without relying on the decisions laid down in the Ritu Chabaria for a short period of time. Now, ordinarily, the only recourse available to the Union of India with respect to the Ritu Chabaria judgment would be filing a review petition. And when you do file a review petition, it ordinarily lies in front of the same bench. So a recall, peti uh, for a recall petition is not something that the government should have moved. And even if it was a review petition, it should not have been entertained by the Chief Justice of India in the very first place. Now, when we do talk of the Chief Justice of India and like when we're talking of his role among all the judges that are in the Supreme Court, we call him, we often call him the master of the roster. So there is a reason behind this. Now, when we're talking of the constitutional scheme of things, all judges of the Supreme Court are equal with respect to their judicial powers. However, it is the Chief Justice of India who enjoys a special administrative power. Let's say they could be in the form of constituting benches or assigning matters and references for reconsideration of a larger bench. Now, the, this is the reason why the Chief Justice of India is known as the master of the roster. And this is why he is also regarded as the first among equals in relation to the companion judges. But in any given bench, that includes the Chief Justice of India, the vote or power given to the CJI is the same as that is given to his companion judges. We have seen a lot of Chief Justice of, Chief Justices of India actually authoring a minority opinion of the court. And in fact, if we look into it, the most recent such order was the one passed by the Supreme Court in the case of the EWS quota or the Economic Weaker Section quota dispute where the then Chief Justice of India, Justice U. U. Lalit, along with Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt, authored the minority opinion of the Now, most Commonwealth countries, such as the UK, Australia, Canada, they also have a similar system in place. And countries which don't, 
such as the US, they have a system where all judges collectively exercise power and render decisions since they sit in block. So when we're talking of the position of a master of the roster, it is very evident that there can be an abuse of powers that owes itself from the position that the Chief Justice of India sits in. And if this abuse of power becomes rampant, then it is a cause of concern. Now, five years ago, four senior judges of the Supreme Court alleged infirmities and irregularities in the administration and assigning of cases. Now, by virtue of this position, since the Chief Justice of India is, after all, one of the most supreme individuals there is in the Indian democracy, he has unending powers as the master of the roster. Hence, it is also the responsibility of this individual who is sitting at the plates of the Chief Justice of India to refrain from expanding the scope of his powers as master of roster. The practice of allocating cases which is generally upon the CJI should be computerized and left entirely outside the purview of the CJI. Now, the order has the effect of enlarging the power of CGI in this particular interim order, as we are talking of, on the judicial side. Instead, so the entire master of roster thing, as we just discussed, is only applicable on the administrative side of the Supreme Court. And now, if you're taking into consideration how the CGI came forward and entertained a recall petition, then put an interim order which you know bars or which advises the courts to not apply the Ritu Chabaria judgment. This shows that his master of the roster powers are now enlarging and is spilling onto the judicial side and creating an unprecedented intra-court appellate mechanism within the Supreme Court in total disregard of the established procedure, which is a review petition, which often lies in front of the same bench that gave the judgment in the first place. So with this, we move on to the new segment for the day. Firstly, we have RBI approves merger of Maratha Co-op Bank with Cosmos Co-op Bank. Now, this decision comes after the Maharashtra, the Maratha Sharkari Bank established in 1946 with seven branches in Mumbai had been placed under regulatory directions by the central bank since August 31, 2016. The scheme has been sanctioned under the authority of the Banking Regulation Act 1949, and the merger will allow customers of the Maratha Sarkari Bank to seamlessly transition their banking activities to the Cosmos Cooperative Bank, ensuring minimal disruption and uninterrupted services. Secondly, we have ISRO launches its first, its next generational navigation satellite, NVS-1. ISRO's GSLV F-12 rocket with NVS-01 satellite was successfully launched at 1042 from Sriharikota. The rocket lifted off from the second launch pad at Satish Dhawan Space Center and injected NVS-1 satellite in its geosynchronous orbit. The satellite weighing 2232 kilograms is the first of the second generation satellites envisaged for the navigation with Indian Constellation series. Thirdly, we have India Saudi Naval Drill concludes. The sea phase of second edition of bilateral exercise Al Mohit Al Hindi 23 between the Indian Navy and the Royal Saudi Naval Force was held from the 23rd to 25th of May of Al Jubail, Saudi Arabia. INS Tarkash, INS Shubhadra, and Dornier Maritime Patrol aircraft participated in the exercise from the Indian side. The RSNF was represented by HMS Badr and Abdul Aziz, MH60R Hilo, and a UAV. The successful conduct of Al Mohit Al Hindi 2023 showcased a high degree of professionalism, interoperability, and exchanges of the best practices between the two navies. Next up, we have the Gyanpeet Awards, and as Damodar Mozo gets Gyanpeet Award and becomes the second Konkani writer to get so. The eminent Konkani writer Damodar Mozo has been confirmed the 57th Gyanpeet Award of 2022. Noted Assamese poet and literator Nilmani Fukan backed the 56th Gyanpeet Award 2021. Ravindra Kelekar was the first Konkani author who won the 42nd Gyanpeet Award in 20, 2006. Next up, we have five judges who have been elevated as High Court Justices and Chief Justices. We have Justice Pankaj Mittal, who has been elevated as the Chief Justice of Rajasthan High Court. 
Justice Sanjay Karol, who has been elevated as the Chief Justice of Patna High Court, and Justice P.V. Sanjay Kumar, who has been elevated as the Chief Justice of Manipur High Court. Apart from that, we have also Justice Manoj Mishra, who has now been placed at the Allahabad High Court, and Justice Asanuddin Amanullah, who now comes in to serve as a judge at the Patna High Court. For the international news segment of the day, we have Saudi Arabia and Canada to restore diplomatic ties. Saudi Arabia and Canada have reached an agreement to restore full diplomatic ties and appoint new ambassadors, bringing an end to a dispute from 2018. Recognizing the importance of engaging with Saudi Arabia as a significant global player, the Canadian government emphasized that empty chairs and strained relations do not serve the interests of either country or promote human rights. The Saudi government has been instrumental in evacuating Canadians in Sudan and is actively involved in seeking a resolution to the conflict in that region. Secondly, we have Erdogan wins Turkish presidential elections. With 99.43% of the vote counted, Turkey's Supreme Election, a point, uh, Supreme Election Authority announced late that Erdogan had won 52.14% of the votes, while Kurchad Daglu received 47.86%. With a gap of more than 2 million votes between the candidates, the votes yet to be counted would not change the result, said Ahmed Yener, the head of the election board. Next up, we have the International Everest Day. The adventurous pair Norgay, a Nepali Indian Sherpa, and Hilary, a New Zealander, summited Everest at 11.30 a.m. on 29th May, becoming the first people ever to set foot on the world-famous mountaintop. When Hilary passed away in 2008, Nepal founded International Everest Day in his honor and chose the date of Hilary and Norgay's summit as the day to mark the occasion. While various events and memorials are observed in the region, this day has gone on to be celebrated all over the world. Next up, we have Princess Sophia Dilip Singh, UK, Singh's UK home gets commemorative blue plaque. The former residence of Princess Sophia Dilip Singh, an influential suffragette, of in, uh, an influential suffragette Indian princess, has been commemorated with the unveiling of blue plaque in southwest London. Notably, she was the goddaughter of Queen Victoria and belonged to the Punjabi royal family. The Blue Plague serves as a testament to Princess Sophia's remarkable contributions to the suffragette movement and her enduring legacy as an influential figure in women's rights activism. For the legal updates of the day, we have non signatory defendants cannot be exposed to arbitration under Section 8 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act. But the Karnataka High Court has held that non-signatory defendants cannot be exposed to arbitration under Section 8 of the Arbitration and Constitution Act 1996 by allowing the dispute to be referred to arbitration. The bench of Justice Srinivas Harish Kumar held that when, case, when the cause of action against all the defendants is stated to be the same, it cannot be bifurcated so as to allow arbitration proceedings against few of the defendants and continuation of the suit against the others as it would lead to multiplicity of proceedings and delay in adjudication. And this was held in the case of Town Essentials Private Limited versus Daily Ninja Delivery Services Private Limited. So this was all for today. For free study materials and TNA PDF slides, please join our Telegram channel, the link of which you can find in the description, or you can scan the barcode that is given on your screen. Thank you.